Here I'd like to talk a little bit about what's called measure inertia. When I select the icon, you'll see that I have a couple of options. The first option is measure inertia 3D, measure inertia 2D. 2D. If I look at the measure inertia 3D, it's asking for indicate item to be measured. Now, those items can either be a surface or it can be a volume. In this case, I want to measure the entire body, so I'm going to select this body. And what you'll see is a box, bounding box, based off of the XYZ go in around the body. And off of that bounding box, you'll notice that I have my center of gravity. You'll also see a density, mass, area, volume. Calculation mode is exact, once again, because I'm dealing with uh, part data, not CGR data. And you'll see down here inertia G, and it gives you the inertia matrix. Now, I'm going to just cancel this, and I'm just going to apply a material. The material I'm going to use, we'll use something nice and heavy. Uh, brass is good. Apply that to the part body. Now I'll do my measure inertia, measure my body, and you'll notice that everything is much heavier. It automatically updates as you change the materials. It does a really good job keeping track of that. So if you're very sensitive to weights, you want to make sure you apply the proper material. Now, a lot of times you may need to have an inertia based off of an axis or an axis system or off of a point or something along those lines. So what you can do is if you go into customize, here you'll see uh, you have the equivalent, principal axes, and then the various inertia types. Select OK. And what you'll now see are, here are my principal moments, principal axis, as spelled out. Now, if I come in here, you'll see inertia O, inertia P, this is select based off of a point. So if I specify a point, maybe I want this point for some reason, I can come in here, say inertia axis, and this is going to be a line. So I need to come in and specify an actual line or inertia to an axis system. Specify my axis system, pick my axis system, and then there you have your inertias based off of that given axis system. If you go into Create Geometry, you can create the center of gravity and the axis system based off of that center of gravity. Select OK. You'll notice it puts in the axis system. And there's my measure with all of those moments listed. Now, Based off of that, I'm just going to simply select OK, and I'm going to come in and reanalyze, but a 2D. Hide this, and hide this, so I'm going to go back into my inertia. If I specify measure 2D inertia, and I specify a surface, you'll notice it gives me that 2D measure of inertia. Someone's going to come and ask me, well, what if I want to measure a actual section through the part. Well, you have to set up a little bit of geometry. So we'll go in generative shape design. And for this geometry that we're going to set up, we're going to start with a point. That point's going to be, let's say, on this edge. Maybe we want to cut a section just on this side of the rib. So I'll throw a point in. Next, I'll throw in a plane on that, along that edge as well through that point. Select OK. And then now I'm going to do an intersect. I want to intersect this plane with the body. Notice I'm selecting the entire body. Select OK. And there is my section. I'm going to hide the part body. And as I go into this part body, or I apologize, into this section, 
If I go in and measure the inertia, so, and measure the inertia on a 2D, you'll see that it's saying selection not valid. And the reason why it's not valid is it's because it's asking for a surface. So what you need to do is you need to just simply do a fill on that intersection. Now that I have that filled on, I can go in here, do my 2D section, specify my surface, and now I get my 2D section. Once again, here's my area, there's my center of gravity, so on. If I go into customize, you'll see that I'm limited to what I can select again because this is a 2D moment. This isn't uh, the full 3D, so you don't need these X or uh, matrix O, P, axis, and axis system. The density means nothing, mass needs nothing, volume. All you're going to get is the area and center of gravity and the principal moments. And once again, you can keep the measure. And by keeping that measurement, you have all of these available to you to link to something else. If I double click on one of these, you'll notice that I have the ability to do an export. If I export, it wants to spit out a text file. So you can take all those moments, all those measurements, save out a text file, and let's go to desktop. Uh, let's go to my documents. Go into desktop, we'll go into documents. Open up my text file. And as you can see, it puts all of the relevant information in here. All the moments, the types of, so on and so forth. Everything's listed out. So it's quick and easy to export that file out. And import it into whatever it is you're using analysis wise to get that into the system that you need it to get into. So those are the basic premises behind the 3D and the 2D inertia measurements as well as setting up a point on an edge and using a plane along on that edge on that point to cut that section. If you want to I can go in here and I can modify the location of that point and you'll see this all updates and what's nice about this is, as I look at this, I can update this, do a local update, and I will have a new measurement based off of this position. So if I move this again, select OK, you'll see it asks for an update. I can right mouse click, do a local update, and those numbers will change to reflect the new position for the new section. So if you're wise with this, you could set up several sections and locations, and then um, if the model changes, you get an automatic update to those sections so you can adjust the position quickly and easily.